Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the third module of computer organization. So uh, in this module we have just the four topics, very easy module. Let's uh, get started without wasting more time. And if you watch the video till the end, you can easily score more than 80% marks. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more details like this. Let's get started. So uh, the first topic in the four topics is the basics of computer organization. Okay, let's have a look at the basics. So what is a computer? A computer is can be defined as a fast calculating machine that intakes data processes it and gives the output okay so what it does it takes the data it processes it and gives the output okay and what is a program it's a set of instructions okay if you want to perform something there will be instructions to do that right so that is uh, the whole set is called as a program okay and the place where the data is stored is called a uh, called as a memory okay wherever the data is stored it is called as the memory now there are different types of computer the first one is the personal computer which we use notebook computer is nothing but a tablet or a mobile workstation is used for high-end graphics and gaming systems enterprise system is used for business supercomputers are used for scientific purposes and researchers okay then we have the next important topic which is the functional units very very important question from exam point of view there are five functional units Let, uh, let's have a look at each of them the first is the input okay input what does uh, input mean you are getting the data from the system okay so it can be gotten from the keyboard from the mouse and so on and from the mic and from the camera okay so the data is encoded in the form of zeros and ones okay that is an important uh, concept and the uh, memory next is the memory so the memory yeah we have two types of memory the primary memory and the secondary memory okay primary memory is the one which is used for uh, the current programs which is stored and for accessing the fast uh, data that is stored in the primary memory secondary memory stores it for a longer time like for the uh, like it's like a permanent storage okay primary memory will be cleared off when we shut down the system but secondary memory will have all the data okay so that is the uh, two types of memory and for each memory we'll be using the addresses to uh, check where the data is stored and so on okay so uh, that will be present in both the primary and secondary memory next we have the uh, output okay so uh, the output will be uh, of the type like uh, output in the form of image or from the printer from the sound uh, from the speakers those kind of things are called as the output so output will come after the processing okay processing the data and generating the output so processing will happen by the ALU arithmetic logic unit what it does it will perform the operations of the addition and subtraction or fetching the memory deleting storing our data and getting the data all those things will be performed by ALU and the control unit does all the operations when what is to be performed okay when what is to be performed that is done by the control unit okay so some of the basic operational concepts are as follows like the loading the data storing the data adding and subtracting etc okay so let's take an example so the assembly level language is used assembly level language is an intermediary between zeros and ones and our normal programming language so here we have add and we have loca loca means location direct location is specified here and r not is present here so what it does is suppose that location is here and location has some data present okay so that data Data will be fetched and stored in R0. Okay, R0 is another register that will be stored here. So add a location to R0. What it will do? It will take the value from the location. It will not just store here. It will add the content of R0. What is present here? It will generate the addition of both of these values, and it will get one value. It will replace the value in the R0. Okay, that is what add loca to R0. Then uh, we have another type of example where we are doing the uh, load uh, loca into R1. So there is R1 here, and the value of uh, location will be stored in R1 whatever the value uh, location has and then what we do add R1 R0 R1 R0 means in R0 what is to be stored R0 plus R1 these two uh, data will be fetched and added and that will be again stored in R0 okay so that is the operation here next the ALU performs the arithmetic operation there are two things are used instruction register is used and program counter is used okay instruction register is nothing but a set of instruction which is to be performed one by one and all this instruction is present for one program okay so this is called as instruction register this is called as instruction register and program count is nothing but where the program is pointing to what next is the operation what next is the operation so PC will be pointing to here in next uh, case the PC will come here in next case the PC will come here and so on till the end it will go okay there are two more registers facilitate the communication with the memory MAR and MDR what is MAR memory address register okay so it will be having the addresses memory address register which uh, address uh, is to be fetched next and memory data register means from that address whatever we fetch that data will be stored in memory data register okay so those are present here as you can see this is the memory and this is the memory address register memory data register memory address will have the PC and the instruction register memory data register will be stored having uh, n number of registers where the data which is fetched will be stored here so that this data can be used by ALU for processing uh, the data okay and control unit will be specifying which instruction is to be taken next and what operation has to be performed and the operation is performed here and it is sent back to the system here. Okay. 
Now, what is the bus? Bus is nothing but a straight line here, which will be transferring the data from the different parts. Okay, so all the data will be present here. It will be traveling like this, and whichever the processor wants, memory wants, output or input, whatever the data is to be get or fetched, or it is to be given to the bus or taken from the bus, it will be happening at the same time. Okay, so it's very easy, flexible, and uh, cheaper also. So the uh, the bus structure is used very widely. Next, we have the performance. The most important measure. Okay, the most important measure is what the performance of a computer. It is how quickly it can execute the program. So okay, how fast it is executing the programs. So the time needed to execute the program is called as a processor time. So there is a program here. How much time is required to uh, execute it? That is defined by the processor time. And we will be using a processor clock, which is nothing but a circuit controlled by a timing signal. Okay, what is a processor clock? It will check how much time it is taking that clock. Okay, so the instruction is divided into many steps. Okay, so suppose that this is my instruction, it will divide it into many steps here, and each of these steps takes one clock cycle. Okay, this takes one clock cycle, this also takes one clock cycle, and so on. Every step will take one clock cycle so that uh, it is divided so small that one clock cycle will be sufficient for executing the uh, code here. Okay, if P is the length of one clock cycle okay if this length is p then the rate will be 1 by p okay rate will be inverse of p how much the clock cycle is there the inverse is the rate so more uh, the p the lesser the uh, uh, rate okay so if you want to increase the rate we have to reduce the p which is how much is the length of one clock cycle if the clock cycle is very small means it is taking less time to execute the program right if the clock cycle is very small means it is taking less time to execute one step that means faster execution right so we have the basic performance equation. This is also very, very important from exam point of view. Let's have a look at what it is. T is equal to N S by R. What is T? T is the time required to execute a program. So I have a program P. How much time is required to execute the program? That will be calculated by N into S by R. What is N? Number of instructions. How many instructions this has? How many instructions? And it is multiplied by S. S is the average number of steps in an instruction. As I told you, instruction is divided into many steps. And what is the average number of steps an instruction has? That number we will take, multiply by total number of instructions. So we'll get the total steps. Okay. Total steps when we, uh, when we get, we'll divide by the rate. That's all. Okay. This is a very important question from exam point of view. So to increase the uh, efficiency, we have to reduce the value of T because less T means less time it took to execute. Right. So the clock rate can be increased by R can be increased. If R is increased, that means P will be uh, reduced. P is the length of the clock cycle. Okay. So R can be increased by two things, improving the integrated circuit technology to reduce the execution of basic steps time. How much time it takes to execute one step that will be reduced so that it will fastly execute. Reducing the amount of processing done in one step. How much processing is happening that will be reduced so that this will be performed very faster and eventually the rate will be increased. So performance is uh, measured in the following ways running on time on reference computer there will be a reference computer how much time it took to run and this is the computer under test how much time it took to uh, execute the program in the test computer now if the spec rating is 50 okay if the spec rating is 50 that means the test computer that the computer which you are testing is 50 times faster than the reference computer so overall spec rating for all the n program this is for just one program but a computer will be having n programs right the calculator the recorder the paint whatsapp and so on so all those uh, programs uh, addition will be done here by one is to n and that that will be calculated here so overall spec rating is calculated by using this formula Going to the third topic, we have the machine instruction and programs. Okay, so each of the uh, program is divided into many different uh, words, and each of the words is stored in a memory. Okay, so data is stored in a memory. Whatever data we are uh, sending to the computer, that is stored in the memory in the form of words. So what is a word? Word is nothing but a group of data. Okay, a space will be allocated. In there, the data will be stored uh, one after the other. Okay, so this one thing is called as a word. This is the first word. This is the second word, and third word, and so on. Okay, so usually the word like of a computer will be 32 bits there will be 32 bits of data okay so uh, this one word is as you are seeing this is of 32 bits okay 32 bits it can vary from computer to computer it, some can be 16 32 64 and so on but usually we use 32 bits okay so 32 bits will be first divided into uh, four parts 888 eight, eight bits and here each of the word will be stored here one ascii character can be stored here one ascii character one ascii character one ascii character so in one word four ascii characters can be stored okay there are two types of memory addressing how many memory addressing are there there are two types of memory addressing big indian and little indian assignments 
all right so big indian and little indian assignment so what is big indian big indian will store the uh, lower byte address okay lower byte means the zeros it will be stored in the most significant bytes leftmost byte in the left part there will be zero that is called as big indian little indian will have right part as zero okay so that's the only difference usually we uh, use the big indian assignment okay so um, the computer must be able to perform four operation uh, types data transfer between memory and processor arithmetic and logical operation this is the calculation part this is the data transfer part and programming sequencing control this is the control part io transform means input output it should handle these four things the computer should be able to handle okay and what are the basic instruction types there are three types of addressing okay three address instruction so what does this mean here it is add a b c what it uh, does is it will add the content of a and b a plus b it will do and it will store in c got my point in c what will be stored a plus b if it's given in this format two address instruction add a comma b that means what will happen the a's instruction is data will be added with b and again replaced in b okay so b's value will be a plus b okay initial value of b will be added with a and the answer will be stored in b one address instruction first load a a will be loaded in a register r not so r not will have a and add b add b means uh, b will be added here uh, with the a and the result will be stored in c so r not's value will be stored in c okay that is the uh, three addressing modes then next we have the instruction execution program counter points to the next instruction to be executed so as i told you that the instructions will be stored in the form of a register one after the other there will be many instructions right so each of these instruction the uh, pointer will be there that is called as program counter so the program counter points to the next instruction uh, which is to be executed so uh, here the uh, this is the uh, register which is stored here so this is in this example we are doing the c is equal to a plus b okay so this is the thing which we need to perform how it happens in the memory let's have a look firstly we have to do c is equal to a plus b for that we will be storing a here b here and c here whatever data it is there that will be stored in the memory okay so this is how it will be stored the data for the program and then execution begins here we have to do c is equal to a plus b so first step what we have to do we have to fetch the value of a into the r not so r not will be our register in which a will be stored first okay then what will happen add b to r not means in r not uh, a is stored right then b will also be added to r not b will be added here next what we do move r not to c the r not has the sum of uh, a and b that will be stored to c so in c what you will get uh, a plus b value this is how it happens in the memory okay next we have branching and uh, branching means looping okay looping is implemented as follows so we have two examples one is without branching and one is with branching so without branching how it happens suppose that i want to uh, add uh, r not uh, means i want to add num1 and num2 and num3 i have to add num1 till num n okay i have to add num1 till num n okay num1 plus num2 plus num3 num4 num5 till num n i have to add so what i can do move num1 to r not add num2 to r0 num3 to r0 whatever the num is there keep on adding to r0 move the r0 to finally to sum okay this is the linear execution without branching with branching what i will do first i will move how many numbers are there in r1 so r1 will have n value then clear r0 r0 will be empty here now we will loop loop means what we will keep on adding like in the r0 we need to store the value right so i will uh, uh, do the loop so that the next number will be added in r0 again it will uh, decrement r1 r1 has how many numbers are there so since one number is added i'll decrement r1 and then it will loop again till it is zero branch zero means till r1 is zero we have to loop back here loop back add again add r not again add r not add r not add r not like that i'll keep on doing until r1 becomes zero then i will move the r not to some this is called as branching we are branching again it back okay we have a branch here or it is also called as a loop so this is called as the uh, looping okay and it is very simple because we need not write uh, n number of times the same command we can just do it as a loop okay so that is called as a, a branching next we have the condition codes or the flags what are the condition codes so condition codes or the flags are used to keep information about the status of program so about the status of the program the information is there okay so it can have a carry or borrow flag so in case uh, a large number is getting added or we are subtracting uh, like suppose uh, from 100 we are subtracting uh, 99 so what we will do we will take the borrow from here 0 then this will become 9 this so this is called as borrow and carry means what 17 plus uh, 39 9 plus 7 is equal to 16 this is carry okay like that carry or borrow these bits are stored in the carry borrow flag zero flag means if the answer is zero negative flag means if the answer is negative auxiliary flag means carry bit in four bit addition what is coming that's auxiliary flag or four flag means if the uh, space is this much only but the number is more than this that is called as overflow flag parity flag will be set if the result has even number of ones okay 
going to the last topic which is addressing modes there are eight addressing modes very important question from exam point of view the different ways in which the location of an operand is specified in instruction is referred to as addressing mode how we do the different types of addressing okay let's have a look at each uh, one by one so these are the different types of addressing we'll understand this by an example okay so i'll be taking each one of these and giving it, uh, giving an example and explaining it how it is okay so let's have a look immediate mode is the first one in immediate mode what happens move 200 to r naught so uh, I want to uh, get the address. Okay, in addressing modes, we are getting the address. Okay, just remember this one. We are getting what address? Okay, how do we get the address? We are getting address by moving this value here. In immediate mode, if we get the address, we are moving directly uh, 200 to R naught. So R naught will be having 200 value. So this is the immediate mode. We are already getting the address here. Next is the register mode. In register mode, we are moving the R1 value to R2. Okay, R1 has some value. Suppose that it is having 100. In R2, we have to also have 100. So we'll move R1's value to r2 that is called as move uh, register mode absolute mode means direct mode move location to r0 so loc means location whatever the location is present the direct location which you want that directly it will be moved to r0 uh, r2 okay so that will be called as uh, move location r2 it is direct one in indirect mode what happens we are doing two things first is the register we are fetching and in the location we are uh, storing the value so here what will be doing see here we are uh, trying to add r1 to r0 okay whatever is stored in r1 that we are adding in r0 okay so r1 has one value okay so let's understand this one example so, uh, here only i'll explain see add r1 to r0 okay so add r1 to r0 here okay so here we have in r1 what we have the value b here so whatever is present in b that is to be added in r0 you got the point whatever is present in b that is to be added uh, in r0 how we got b we got b from r1 so if r1 is written like this so whatever is present in that register which is b that will be fetched and that will be added okay that is how the indirect mode works okay if it's through a memory location add a to r0 whatever is present in a that is to be added in r0 what is present in a b what is present in b that is to be added here we are getting the address okay from address we are getting the value here also we are getting the address r1 is the address from address we are getting the value here okay and from here we'll be getting the operand okay that is indirect mode in index mode what we do xr1 is here so what does xr1 mean xr1 means effective address will be uh, ri's location plus x okay whatever ri has okay ri will be having some value that value is the address okay ri has the address that address plus x okay let's understand this by an example if you want to do the following operation load r2 comma 20 r5 what what happens here understand one by one we have to load r2 where we have to load we have to load in 20 from r5 what is r5 having first of all r5 is having thousand so thousand will be fetched first and then what will happen 20 will be added 20 will be added here and here what value we have there r2 should be stored okay that is how the uh, in index mode works base index and out offset set okay this is also the same thing but here we'll be uh, just using instead of uh, one register we'll be using two registers here and instead of uh, like even with two registers you want to do the uh, increment we can use this one okay base index with offset then uh, we have the next one which is the relative one in relative one what will happen the effective address will be whatever is stored in pc that will be added with x program counter plus x so what it basically does is here we have the instruction set okay here we have the different types of instructions and pc is pointing here program counter and if you want to fetch this value the x will be calculated here and then this will be executed so that pc will come here and this will be executed next we have the uh, auto increment and auto decrement here what will happen first the address is fetched then the increment on ri will happen here the decrement on ri will happen first then the uh, address is fetched okay that's all for this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one